Hi, welcome to Free Academy English. I'm Geraldine and I just spent the last one hour and a half recording a perfect video and it turns out that I wasn't recording anything. So now I'm gonna make my no editing video. No editing, okay. This video is about learning English. You're asking how to start or how to improve your English. And to learn English, you need to know three things. Grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. The grammar, because it's the way you speak a language. The vocabulary, because they are the words that you need to say. And the pronunciation, because they are the sounds that you have to make. How do you learn grammar? With a good book. The book I use is Grammar in Use. You can download it, you can buy it, or you can use any other book. I particularly like Grammar in Use because the explanation is simple and because it has exercises. Because an important thing to do is to start practicing right away. My neighbors. If you are a real beginner, meaning you really don't understand any English, maybe you are afraid if the book is just in English. But what you have to do is look for books that are your level. Your level is real beginner. And you can find them online and I will give you some links in the description of the video. If you really, really need to use your native language too, you can do that too, but I don't recommend it. I don't like translating because it, it, it becomes a habit and translating is not a good thing. Then you have to learn vocabulary. Again, I wouldn't say, well, write a word in your language and in English because you are going to translate the words. And the idea is that you associate the idea that that word means. That's why I prefer picture dictionaries. The picture dictionary I use is the word by word picture dictionary, which is good, but it doesn't have the pronunciation. So that's a drawback. But there are many, many picture dictionaries that you can use online, uh, learners dictionaries that will help you too. What else? Um, vocabulary. Oh, and uh, it's useful to learn a root word and all the associated words to that one when you are at a little higher level. But to know what kind of word it is that you're learning. If it's a noun, a verb, an adjective, and then all the parts of the speech. In pronunciation, we need to learn the sounds the rhythm and the intonation. That this is why I don't do no editing because there's a lot of noise. And the sounds, I'll I'll put the sources for them. There are good websites in which you can learn the sounds of English because that's important to learn first to learn which sounds are the ones you have to make. And then for the intonation and rhythm, the best is, well, just to, to watch and to listen to real English. If you are intermediate to advanced, I will recommend Rachel's English, of course. She's the best. Eventually, what you want to do is to be able to read in English, listen in English, speak and write in English. And especially if you want your English to get certified because, well, yeah. so for practicing, you need to read. To learn how to read, you need to read. The key in reading is to read according to your level, because you can read the New York Times, but you're not gonna understand it. So, although that reading helps you, because you will become familiar with the words in English, even if you don't know what they mean, you will not learn much about the language. But you will learn more 
if you go to your level. For example, if you're just starting, your level is real beginner, starter. And there are books that are modified according to the level of the student. Another website that I love is ReTheory. You can go there, take an exam of your level of English, and you can practice reading there. And you can also practice writing there. I use it for everything, not only for reading. For listening, also, you need to listen. And while watching movies, TV, uh, listening to songs is very, very useful, if it is too overwhelming to you, try finding songs, finding programs, finding podcasts, things that are according to your level. So you can pick more things. And then you can start going beyond. From what you hear, just choosing some words for new vocabulary, for example, or listening and transcribing what you're hearing, or listening and memorizing, which is easier with songs. All the listening is going to help you to speak. So for speaking, watching TV and um, listening to music is also so very useful to learn the pronunciation, the intonation, and the rhythm. Particularly for rhythm, uh, songs are very, very useful. So I recommend uh, downloading the lyrics of the songs and uh, learning the songs and then singing the songs and saying the songs. It's not uh, fast. You, you don't learn a song like this. No, you really need to take your time to learn it. But once you learn it, you you're gonna see, you feel that you are speaking English. And finally, for writing, you need to write. I said, when you start with your grammar, you start with vocabulary, you need to write. So the first thing to write is what, what you read, for example. You're reading and you take that opportunity to practice your writing too. At first, your writing can be just copying the same thing you're reading. And then you can move on to paraphrasing that. You can move on to writing something similar, to summarizing the information, to reflecting on that information, and to giving an opinion on that information. But when writing, you need to do it properly. Because, especially if you want to certify your English, you want to write well. And writing is a process. The process includes brainstorming, getting the ideas, which is one of the points that many students have problems with. And for this brainstorming, even writing is a good exercise, which I do, is free writing. Letting your ideas flow. That is the first step for writing. The second step is to start writing. But you start writing a first draft, like a first attempt of the final result that you want, that is still far. Then you're going to read the first attempt, you're going to edit it, you're going to correct it, you're going to change something maybe, and after writing again, you are going to have your final copy, your final paper, your final essay, your final piece of writing that you wanted in the first place. So it's a whole process. And if you get used to that process, then you will do it naturally. And when in an exam they ask you to write something in 30 minutes, you are going to kind of make that process because you already do it naturally. But it's going to be like a first draft, but a good draft. Okay, and that's how you learn. I'll put, I said, I will put the, the links of the material you will need and um, well that's it thank you for watching subscribe share and I hope to see you soon